Oui, c'est vrai qu'on m'entend là très bien. C'est moi en ADN. Moi en ADN. Ok, we're just going to start with Oumu uh, Kitab Al-Fatiha. Okay, um, so since the, the the session is about procedure presentation, um, and obviously procedure presentation is not uh, it's not best to do it online anyway. So you need to see and and uh, at least observe or or assist uh, before you doing it. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you guys coming back tomorrow to, to the campus, and so hopefully. Hopefully, you can get more in terms of observation of procedure uh, in the hospitals uh, um, once once we clear up your your quarantine and so on. Uh, but for the time being, um, uh, procedure presentation is just going to be it's going to be the way of of uh, doing things uh, step by step uh, and, and try to try to do it with we call it um, uh, a set. A septic technique. If you're doing a uh, lumbar puncture or you're doing any procedure, uh, you need to do it as sterile and as aseptic uh, as possible. Um, so, so, uh, so I, I requested uh, Adila and uh, tried to do probably three procedure uh, presentation today, and then and then we're just going to go through bit by bit. And if you can, if you guys got any question, then then we we can we can uh, talk about it. Um, but um, it's, it's not ideal, but, but this is the way that uh, we are going to do it for the time being. Okay. Right, who's going to start then? Okay, we have okay. so we'll start with Zaira, and then Abi, and then myself. Okay. Right. Hi to Project Malaysia. So, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'm going to uh, present regarding the venous punctures and peripheral condition in uh, pediatrics. So, first, we're going to look at the uh, venous puncture procedure. So, we're going to go through the indication, uh, what equipment need, and the site selection for the venous puncture procedure as well as the complication. Okay, so. Uh, Sekali, the venous puncture is a procedure in which a drop of blood from the patient veins to obtain a blood sample. Okay. So, uh, the equipment, uh, we know that we need a glove uh, and then we need needle, which is the 20 to 25 gauge uh, size, uh, or scalp needle, and we need alcohol swab, tuniki and cotton. Okay, these are the pictures uh, regarding the uh, size for the needle. Uh, needed for the inner punching. Usually we use the uh, yellow for the uh, pediatric patient. Okay, so the site selection for the uh, pediatric. So usually uh, the most common site uh, will be the median cubital vein or median cephalic vein. Basic uh, vein and dorsal hand veins also uh, can be acceptable. However, in the newborn, uh, the heel will be uh, preferred uh, using the sterile blood lancet. I think it is uh, most um, for the newborn screening. Uh, for the heel just now, uh, you need to punch at the um, green area and try to avoid the central part of the heel because it can uh, might injure the underlying bone. So uh, I prepared a video. Uh, so. 
So basically this video um, is a procedure or steps uh, for the renal puncture in the pediatry. So first we need to do the setup clinic. Okay. Then we need to palpate the vein, so that the side to be punctured. Make sure you need to hold the hands uh, firmly in order to stabilize the vein. So make sure the bone uh, is facing up, and then the angle must be uh, 15 to uh, 25 degree angle. And then once we see the uh, touch from the uh, So that's for the uh, vein puncture. So this one is a uh, vein puncture at the side um, of the intercubital fossa. It is at the median uh, vein, median cubital vein. very slightly on the syringe and then continue to hold. Let the syringe slowly fill. Be patient. Pulling back too forcefully will collapse the baby's tiny veins and you will not get blood. Draw up the amount of blood you need. Release the tourniquet, remove the needle, and cover the site with a cotton ball. Fill the labeled tube and safely dispose of the needle. The third way uses a sterile butterfly device. This is more costly, but like the needle, can be easy to maneuver. Find a good vein. So this one is uh, using the scalp vein. Hide the tourniquet so you can easily release it. Carefully clean the skin and let it dry. Hold the skin firmly and insert the needle. Move the needle slightly until you see a flash of blood in the tube to show that you're in the vein. Uncap the end of the device to draw the blood into the tubing. It then drips into the tube.
In this second example, a syringe is attached to the tubing. Pulling up slightly on the syringe draws the blood into the tubing. Be aware, if it feels too slowly, it can clot. Let it fill the syringe until you have the amount of blood you need. Release the tourniquet. Remove the needle and cover the site with a cotton ball. Then safely dispose of the butterfly device. Remember, before you start, inform the caregiver, gather all your supplies, and wrap the baby snugly. Take a shallow approach with the needle. Be patient with the baby's tiny veins. A slight pull on a syringe brings the blood. So uh, that's for the uh, step uh, in the vein function in pediatric. So now we move to the so, so it, it is quite quite uh, quite uh, complicated uh, because because we're talking about uh, babies uh, b b um, um, uh, uh, blood sampling and also venous puncture um, and and remember that uh, in, in in adults uh, you you got a good compliance from from the patient in, in children and and also in babies you don't really have the compliance so you need to know uh, in terms of how you're going to make them comply so if you got a baby or or small child you, you can Kita apa kita boleh buat, buat macam apa macam kita bedong dia uh, using the using the bed sheet or or selimut and so on so 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 that's one way of doing that um, or you can ask parents to to hold them and and basically uh, you know, pin them down try to try to stabilize the the limbs that you're going to use for the uh, venom puncture. Um, um, so it's, it's 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 a so not all uh, good uh, in the. Uh, uh, physician who can do venipuncture puncture can do a venipuncture puncture in children so because it needs uh, practice and also uh, technique as well and, and plus uh, you need to make sure they they quite compliance with the with the with the procedure which is difficult in, in children um, the one that the one thing that I would like to uh, mention early on was in babies when you you use the heel uh, it's not really it's not really like like a like a uh, like a venom puncher because when you say venom puncher is is the you you are puncturing the the, the vein for the heel uh, it's, it's like you do we call it a, a heel step it means that you just uh, it's like you're taking uh, blood sugar so you you do the capillary sampling uh, 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 in a baby's heel uh, not really a, a sampling for, for venom puncher okay um, obviously uh, before you start you always take uh, informed consent. From parents, you explain the procedures, uh, what what, uh, what is the, the 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 objective and also the uh, the reason behind uh, taking the blood samples, the procedure, make sure that they understand uh, uh, you know what was the step and and, and the the, uh, the the requirement needed for for the venom puncture so that they understand. If you got like, if you got like five, six, seven years old who understand what you're talking about. Then, then you can always explain to, to, to them as well. Okay. So, uh, the complication that may arise from the venous puncture, uh, first, uh, the may be pain, and then hematoma may occur, may cause injury to the blood vessel wall, and the arterial puncture may occur too. Uh, the evidence by their bright, bright light, the tube, uh, blood cell wall. Okay, so next. So we go to the peripheral condition. So we're going to look at indication, treatment, site procedure, as well as the complication. Okay, so basically, uh, the peripheral condition actually uh, the catheter is placed uh, into a peripheral vein uh, for base access for the administration of the intravenous fluid, intravenous medication, uh, intravenous blood or any blood product, or also the intravenous chemotherapy drugs patient. Oops. So this one is the skeletal selection. 
So we're going to have like different colors with different size of the couch. Okay. So this one is the um, basic part of the IV editor. So make sure the needle tip will be facing up and the critical tip um, the, uh, the skin is uh, it is about uh, 15 to 25 kg angle. So the set of our selection for the um, recommendation, you can choose the Kefalic or Basifas with Bain. You can also dorsal hair venous network. Uh, however, in infants, uh, dorsal hair and dorsal foot bones are usually easier to access compared to the Kefalic or Basifas with Bain. The Kefalic Bain, dorsal venous uh, hair. That was slow hang. So this other video for the um
Okay, so uh, that's for the uh, step in the um, peripheral termination integrity. So, okay, so the complication that may arise from the um, procedure is that uh, first pain, and then the arterial puncture may occur, and also thrombocarditis, but it's rare, actually, thrombocarditis. So, so I think that's all for the the function and the perfect regulation procedure. All right, good. So, so basically, the, the technique uh, is just the way of the technique, really. So, so one, one hand is uh, for stabilizing. So, if you've got small babies, uh, small baby's hand is, is, is quite small. So, you can, you can always use your, your whole, uh, if you are right, right handed, then you can use your left hand just to hold the, 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 the patient hand and stabilize the patient hand. Um, I don't know whether you can see if I if I demonstrate to you how we're going to how we normally do it. Um, so I got my daughter with me at the moment, so I can use her as my uh, guinea pig for the time being. Come on, yeah, So so what I'm going to show you. Um, so it, the hand is like this. So we so, <laughs> so you show the so the way that you hold the hand. So you can use your your two you use the two C's with your with your thumb and also your, your your pointing fingers, and then put it like that. One on the on the on the we call it thing uh, the wrist, and then one hand basically holding the digits like that. And the other the other three the other three fingers basically holding the rest of of the of the of the uh, of the fingers and. So you you can hold it and you can stabilize that quite well. So and you can see the 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 veins there quite nicely as well. So in the small babies, what you can do is you can always gently squeeze the hand, uh, open and squeeze, open and squeeze, so that you, you you fill up the the veins. So so th those are the the technique of of, do, of holding the 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 patient's uh, um, hand. Okay, the two C's and the, the three fingers. This is for small, for, for more small children and small babies. So obviously, the, if if the if the uh, patient hand is, is quite big, uh, then, then then you need you probably need uh, another two another pair of hands to help you out anyway. So so stabilizing uh, the 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 hand is is very important technique to to know as well, um, and and obviously to practice as well. So if you got you know a sister or brother, you can you just practice on on them. In terms of uh, two of the C's and, and the, the, the three fingers. Um, so for me, uh, when a puncher, uh, you can use the, the needles, you can use the uh, butterfly needles, uh, or if, if you're happy to use the branula, then you can use the branula and then drip, uh, drip the, 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 the blood into the bottles with the branula. So there's, there's other techniques as well and other stuff as well. Obviously, uh, the more you practice, you, you, will, you, will, you will have your own preferable method to, to do a venom puncture or, or blood sampling. Okay, so yeah, I think that's all in terms of uh, venom puncture and uh, peripheral coronation anyway, um, because that's not much that, 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 that we can do to, to demonstrate, uh, unless if, if we are doing it physical, physically, then, then, then we, can, we can, you know, you can observe more and more, but I think that video is very helpful as well. Um, and, and and obviously you, you need to know the 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 way you know what to prepare beforehand before before you proceed with the with the with the procedure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so are we can share the hand finish, right? So uh, so next will be uh, Abi then. I will explain about the blood culture and sensitivity. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Can you see my slides? Yes, yeah. I, I can. Yes. Okay, uh, okay so this, uh, this is the outline of with the outline of my presentation, I'll start with introduction, explain about the equipment, and uh, last one is the procedures. Okay, so uh, the purpose of uh, blood culture and sensitivity is to detect an infection in the blood 
and identify the true pathogen to diagnose and treat sepsis. Okay, uh, bear in mind that uh, in blood culture and sensitivity, uh, they can only detect uh, bacteria and fungus. So virus cannot be detected via the blood culture and sensitivity. Okay, uh, for technique, so this is uh, very highly important uh, in taking the blood culture. Uh, so the technique is aseptic technique. So it is uh, more, more aseptic compared to the uh, vena puncture uh, just now. Okay, for indication, so for indication is uh, it is indicated for patient who has any sign and symptom of sepsis. Uh, uh, for any patient who has any sign and symptom of sepsis and uh, it should be taken uh, before the uh, empirical antibiotic administration to the patient so that uh, we would not get the false negative result. Okay. So uh, let us revise what is sepsis. So sepsis is defined as a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host immune response towards an infection. So any child who is suspected of proven infection that has any of these two clinical signs uh, should be treated as sepsis. And a uh, uh, sepsis workup should be done for the patient. So the among the four signs are temperature, hypothermia less than 36, hypothermia more than 38.5, tachycardia or tachypnea, altered mental status and reduced in peripheral perfusion and prolong or prolonged capillary refill time. So any patient who has any of these two clinical signs should be treated as sepsis and blood, blood and culture and blood culture and sensitivity should be taken prior to antibiotic administration. Okay. So that is for a uh, an older child sepsis just now. So for neonatal sepsis, is, uh, the sign and symptom is a little bit different. So they have uh, temperature instability, which is hypo and hypothermia. Uh, skin, uh, skin, skin manifestation is, uh, they, they, they might have poor perfusion, mottling, pallor, jaundice, theremia, or petechiae. Then uh, for the behavioral changes, um, so this one could be detected by the parents or the caretaker, so, such as uh, the child suddenly become lethargic, irritable, or change in tone. And then for the feeding problem, they might have uh, poor feeding, vomiting, diarrhea, or abdominal distension. For cardiovascular, they, sh they might have tachycardia or hypotension, but hypotension uh, usually is the late manifestation of sepsis. Therefore, we, we couldn't we should detect it early by the signs just now, like tachycardia, tachypnea. Okay, for respiratory, they might have tachypnea, cyanosis, or respiratory distress. And for metabolic, the neonic might have a hypo or hypoglycemia, and they might have metabolic acidosis. So these are the signs and symptoms of neonatal sepsis. So before starting any procedures, first you should, uh, as Dr. Azamin has explained just now, uh, we must introduce ourselves. Then we um, must confirm the patient's identification. So it's very important. Then uh, the third one is briefly explain about the procedure, how it is done and uh, its complication, uh, such as, uh, hem such as uh, hematoma, pain and hematoma. And then uh, for the last one, uh, inform, uh, again, inform consent. Okay, for the equipment of the blood culture sensitivity, so these are the equipments. So first, we, we must have the shrink and the needle. For the shrink, uh, the older the older patient or the older child usually needs uh, 10 ml per bottle. So here we can see the uh, aerobic and anaerobic set. So aerobic and anaerobic set usually is then uh, is for the older children. Meanwhile, pediatric bottle is for the younger children. Okay, for the aerobic and anaerobic set, each of the bottle uh, should be filled with ten ml of the blood. Each of them uh, be filled with ten ml of the blood. So uh, during uh, blood taking, we should uh, have we should. 
So uh, take a larger, larger, uh, larger shrimp or like 20 ml shrimp. Okay, then uh, we need uh, the tourniquet. Then uh, this is called disposable dressing set. Then this is called hexidine. Glove, uh, sterile glove. Uh, disposable pl plastic apron. Uh, the cotton ball and this one, the tape. And uh, the most important thing is the blood culture bottle. So uh, this uh, aerobic and anaerobic bottle is for older and pediatric bottle usually we uh, only aerobic aerobic bottle or pink this pink bottle. Then uh, the sharp bin is to discard the sharp needle. Okay, so this is the equipment. Okay, so uh, it is important that we have to know the uh, steps of hand hygiene. So, uh, this is the uh, WHO steps for hand wrap. So, uh, you, you have to know it. And then, uh, washing hands also about 11, has 11 steps and you have to know it detail to prevent uh, any skin, our uh, skin infection infecting the blood, skin, skin flora I mean. Okay. Then, uh, surgical hand rubbing technique also is used. Uh, this is uh, quite different whereby we hand rub from the from our hand up until the elbow. Uh, up until the elbow. Okay. For the procedure, I will just explain and uh, later we'll see the video. Okay, first, we must perform hand hygiene by hand rub or hand wash. Then, open the dressing set. After that, uh, after opening the dressing set, we should arrange all the items uh, plus uh, we take out two needles and a shrink and also sterile glove. And then for, for the chlorhexidine, we put it in 70% isopropyl alcohol to soak the cotton board. Then uh, we remove the caps from the bottles and uh, scrub the, after removing the caps from the bottle, we scrub the rubber bung uh, surface of, the, of each bottle with alcohol swab. Okay, then, uh, and then, then once again, we perform hand hygiene and we go to the patient. So uh, position the patient um, in a comfortable extended position that provides an adequate exposure. Okay, uh, so regarding the side of the blood culture, so it can be taken uh, just like the vena puncture just now, like the dorsal part of the dorsal venous network, or the cut, uh, like the cubital fossil side. And we apply tourniquet four to five, four to five finger width above the vena puncture side and re-examine the vein. And then uh, we must wear a uh, don't uh, we must wear disposable plastic apron. Okay, uh, after we wear wearing the apron, then once again we should uh, perform surgical hand wrap just now. That uh, surgical hand wrap is uh, quite different from a usual hand wrap, whereby we hand wrap our hand from the uh, from, from the distal part of our hand to the elbow. Okay, and then uh, wear uh, wear sterile glue. Okay, after that we clean the side with chlorhexidine soap cotton ball tadi. Uh, so we usually uh, in HDA they use uh, circular motion, clean the side uh, in a circular motion from inside uh, to outside. And then we wait till uh, dry before blood taking. And then we put a clean sterile drip, which is uh, provided in the uh, dressing set, disposable dressing set. And then after that, we draw blood. So regarding the uh, volume of the blood that we should draw. So for a younger patient, usually 1 to 3 ml. And uh, the bottle that we use is the pink bottle, which uh, uh, the pink bottle. And for older children, uh, usually 8 to 10 meals for each bottle, aerobic and anaerobic bottle. 
And then after drawing blood, release the tourniquet and remove needle. Change to another needle uh, before filling the blood into the bottle, into the bottle and to minimize contamination from our, from the uh, from skin. And then uh, apply pressure to the side with a clean gauze. Discard the used needle into the sharp bin and last but not least is thank, thanks the patient. Okay. So this is uh, table regarding the total volume that should be draw from the patient. Okay, before uh, then after the last step is to check the label forms for accuracy and do not cover the barcode on the bottles with patient's label and lastly place the hazard, hazard bag and send to the lab with the request form. Okay, so this is the video. So this video has no sound. So we can see here the equipment. This is hmm. first you have introduced uh, to introduce yourself to the share. Check the ID of the patient and perform hand hygiene before you take out the equipment like uh, sterile dressing set. This is the sterile dressing set. So the blue one is aerobic bottle, the orange is uh, anaerobic. Next, pour the chlorhexidine solution to soak the gauze. Prepare the needle. And sterile, sterile glue. So this part is uh, so important. You clean the rubber bung of the <coughs> of each bottle with uh, alcohol swab. Then you can uh, inspect the vein that you want to answer. So this is a surgical hand wrap. You can see that uh, the, the doctor did the hand wrap up until the elbow. Then wear the sterile gloves. Okay. 
and that you clean and grade the site that you need to function. So this uh, another technique that you can use back and forth. So other than uh, back and forth technique, you can use uh, the circular technique from we clean the site from inside uh, to outside in a circular motion. This is uh, for draping. Okay. So the technique for uh, is just the same as uh, vena puncture. So not necessarily uh, we use this uh, butterfly again. Take the label and forms for accuracy. Do not cover the barcodes and place the biohazard bag and send to the lab with the request form. Okay. And then, uh, and then. <laughs> For the complication of uh, blood cancer and sensitivity, just uh, the same as the vena puncture. So patient can uh, experience pain and hematoma at the site. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Basically, uh, taking blood culture between uh, adult and, and pediatric is, is no, it's n there's no major difference. Uh, there's no major difference apart from uh, the, the, the portal culture. So, so normally in adult, you use the anaerobe and also um, uh, anaerobic and also aerobic uh, uh, blood culture bottles. For pediatric, we only have one. But you can always use the anaerobic and also uh, aerobic blood culture bottles if you've got a big child, like you know, probably uh, six, seven years old, who we think that quite big, quite chubby, and it's very easy to get bloods from them. You can use the, the two bottles uh, culture. Uh, for the pediatric for uh, culture, normally uh, you expect uh, if you think that you cannot get more than five mils uh, of blood, then they use the the pitch, uh, pitch blood culture bottles. But if you think that you can get more than five mils, then you can use the two blood culture bottles. So it's not you know um, uh, you can you can use both uh, depending on how much uh, both how much uh, sample that you can you can get. Um, very important to 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 have a aseptic technique uh, for blood culture bottles because you don't want to have false positive results, meaning that you did a culture, uh, but because of the because the step that you're taking that you probably miss or or, or probably uh, there's contamination on, on the on the skin side or there's contamination uh, uh, on, on the string, contamination on the on the, the top of the blood culture bottle. So sometimes because of the technique is not uh, proper, it's not uh, aseptic, so something you can have uh, false positive uh, blood culture uh, yield uh, because of our technique, uh, especially if you're not uh, drying the skin uh, with the, with the uh, clohexidine properly. So you, sometimes you can have the most commonest uh, and false positive result is the, is the staphylococcus, uh, so coagulation uh, negative uh, staphylococcus aureus. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a skin uh, colonization normally. So, so those are quite common in 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 in, in the uh, whatever uh, false positive result. Uh. But otherwise, uh, so it, uh, it's it's the same uh, way of you taking blood culture in adults. It's just that the technique uh, of venom puncturing uh, you need to to be more uh, more precautious and also more uh, you know uh, more details. Make sure you are you are following the aseptic technique. Okay, so last one. So back to sorry. Uh, is there any question uh, from the previous two two uh, presentation that you want to ask? I have a question. Mm -hmm. For the smaller child, which we cannot draw too much blood, and we only use the uh, pediatric water, 
That yeah. means we will have less uh, since Abi said it's only for aerobic, how about the anaerobic in uh, smaller child? So, 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 uh, so the, the, the pediatric bottles uh, uh, can detect both anaerobic and, and aerobic. Okay, uh, but uh, in, in adult, uh, you try to separate anaerobic and also, uh, uh, and, uh, sorry, and aerobic and also aerobic bottles because of, of the machine. So, so, so normally, if you got uh, too, if you got a good amount of uh, blood samples, you you want to separate so so that uh, you, you can put uh, the, those two bottles in, into the different uh, algae and in different plates as a different machine. Uh, but for pediatrics, uh, you know, uh, they normally can detect both uh, anaerobic and so uh, and aerobic, uh, so aerobic and also anaerobic uh, sample anyway. So um, it's just that uh, the amount of of blood that you're going to come out. So if you got a good amounts, you probably can use the two two bottles. But uh, if you get less amount, then then you can use uh, the pediatric bottles, and it's it's yielded and you know, uh, equally effectively for anaerobic and so. Uh, aerobic uh, uh, microorganism. Mm, doctor, I have patients. So mm -hmm. is there any cut off of age uh, that we can differentiate between younger children and also uh, smaller to uh, younger and also older children? So, so th 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 there's, there's no uh, cut off point. Okay. Uh, so if you've got a child that, that, that is like 10 or 15, you, you, can, you can use the pediatric bottles. The the, the 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 thing that will differentiate whether you, whether you can use the pediatric or anaerobic bottle is the amount of, of blood that you, you 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 can obtain. So if you let let's say if you got a if, if you got like like five years old, and then when you take a, a blood sample and you can manage to take about about fifteen or, or twenty mils, and so so that's a good amount of of blood sample. So you can put uh, to the to the two bottles, you know, to the to, to the anaerobic and also aerobic uh, uh, bottles. But if you only get two mils from a fifteen years old, then you can use the pediatric bottles. So it's about the amount of uh, amount of, of blood tests, uh, amount of blood sample that you, that you can obtain. Uh, but obviously, you know, um, uh, because uh, we tend to uh, pediatric, we tend to be very whatever very uh, stingy with with our sampling. So, so normally, uh, even though you, you are 10 to 11, normally we just take about two meals or three meals, or so, sometimes up to five meals uh, to put into the one piece bottle. But you know, if you, you can, if you can obtain more than five meals, more than 10 meals, then you can always use the, the, the aerobic and also anaerobic uh, blood bottles culture for that. Tapi cuma kadang-kadang kita ambil ambil sikit je, because it's pediatric, so we just take take small sample. Uh, so those are the the uh, the, the the routine that we use. So we, we take, because it's pit sample, uh, pit children. Uh, so sorry, uh, pit special. We just take a small sample up to five five meals, uh, and no, and usually in our pit ward we don't really store the aerobic and also anaerobic bottles. So we just store the pit bottle. Then, so you rarely see the the two bottles in, uh, the aerobic and also anaerobic bottles in our pit ward. So that's why we. We, te we tend to, to send pizza, uh, pizza, uh, one pitch uh, culture bottle here. So normally we take five meals. If they're a big, big child, if they small child, we take one to two meals. But if you go to ED, you know, if you got two bottles, then you can use the two bottles. Uh, if you got one bottle, then you just use, use, water. use, use one bottle. It's just equally effective anyway to, to yield a uh, positive blood culture anyway. Um, it's pizza, pizza, pizza passion, pizza, pizza ward. So you uh, normally we just stock uh, pits uh, blood culture bottle. We don't really stock the the anaerobic or aerobic uh, blood culture. Okay, the, the, in in a situation that you don't you have you run out uh, a blood culture bottle for pits and so you can use the the, the anaerobic and also uh, aerobic uh, blood culture bottle. So uh, so it still can be used uh, as long as long as you've got good amount of blood uh, sample. Lah. Uh, janganlah ambil satu dua untuk one to two meals uh, for for the for the aerobic and anaerobic punya culture so that's not enough lah. so you need to get more okay right last one abe eh bukan and when anet nadi 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 aga adila nadi ya okay
tak dengar tu tak dengar. tak unmute lah okay. so uh, today I'll be talking about nasal gastric tube okay uh, nasal gastric tube is actually a small tube pass through the nose into the stomach for indication of uh, GIP decompression drainage of stomach content gastric levage uh, upper GI bleeding assessment and treatment delivery of medication as well as hydration and enteral nutritional support. So these are the more, the more common uh, NG tube that we use. Uh, use uh, this uh, NG tube, they have uh, the radio opaque line that we can use for us to uh, do assessment post uh, insertion. And as well at the tip of the NG tube, there's actually a lead which will uh, allow the tip to be stayed in the gastric due to the weight. So uh, as usual, the preparation is uh, uh, literally the same. First, ask for informed consent. For, before we have the consent, we need to discuss with the patient what we want to do, what the complication, and why we want, uh, why we need to insert the tube. So then uh, we need to have the documentation of what size we use, uh, when we uh, put it, is there any complication after that. And it's most important, we need to identify the patient names and the positive verification. Notes on patient allergy or adverse reaction, such as uh, latex allergy, uh, it can cause uh, acute adverse reaction. And then, uh, ideally for children, they need uh, this procedure need to be done in a safe environment because it's an invasive and uncomfortable uh, procedure. So the child need to be in the calmest state as possible. And also for observation, we need to observe uh, the vital sign of the children pre and post insertion to identify is there any dis uh, dislocation or wrong insertion or is there any uh, complication afterwards and then between the flex observation chart is actually uh, a chart that we monitor the patient while they are using the tube is there any adverse reaction between the times so after we got the consent uh, regarding the gastric tube size uh, recommended for newborn uh, for feeding we use uh, six french for decompression, 8 francs, and then infants and children up to 5 years, feeding 8 francs, decompression 8 to 10 francs, children over 5 years, uh, we use 8 to 10 francs for feeding, and 10 to 14 francs for decompression. However, we need to have special consideration uh, for such selection in uh, children with developmental delay or any other uh, this, uh, abnormality, we, have, we need to consider small, smaller tube indicators. So these are the colors coding tube, uh, which is uh, the green one is the uh, six strand for newborn, the blue for up to five years, and then uh, the uh, black and white up to uh, five years and above. Okay, so when to start? Before we start inserting, we need to uh, put the child in the most comfortable position and most approachable position. Hold the infant or child during the insertion because they may, uh, they may what? Uh, they may move and may cause uh, wrong insertion. So uh, we may need distraction therapy in uh, smaller children, such as the moms or uh, the guardian may carry their bubbles or their action toys. And if available, uh, uh, child life therapies, the play therapies may be involved. But uh, actually, I've never seen involvement of play therapies before. So the positioning in infant that can't sit yet, so we wrap and, uh, them in the in a sheet or cuddly as per diagram, in supine position with their head elevated for about 15 to 40 degrees. For infant that uh, that can sit at, on older children, we put them in, uh, in a seated position and then we hold their head back uh, so that they don't lean forward uh, but even though we hold their head, we need to avoid uh, the neck to be extended. So it's like a neutral straight position. So these are the equipment needed. We need string for, to aspirate the stomach content as well as to insert uh, some air to uh, detect the tip of the tube. The tube itself, the stethoscope for assessment uh, post insertion, plastic apron, glove, DC for sterile technique, uh, aseptic technique. And pH paper to uh, test the aspirate that we'll take after insertion. So, procedure. First, 
uh, we need to measure the tube. Uh, how long, how far we need to insert the uh, tube. Where we measure from the tube, uh, from the tip of the nose to the bottom of the earlobe until the midpoint between the cephisternum, or the uh, between the cephalic process and the umbilicus. So the length of insertion should be noted in the chart. Can you correct that? Uh, they have 50, 60, 70. So and then after we have uh, measure, we lubricate the end of the tube to to uh, make it easier to insert the loop, the tube, lubricate the end of the tube with water-based lubricant or activate the lubricant of uh, uh, polyurethane silicon tube by following the manager's uh, instruction carefully. Uh, different tube may have different uh, instruction. So, when we have lubricate the tube, we need to determine which side of the nose ring that we want to insert. Examine the nose ring for pattern C, determine best side for insertion, if age appropriate, we can ask them, uh, ask the children uh, themselves uh, if there are any sinusitis, any inflammation, or which uh, uh, nursery they prefer. In younger children, gently occlude each nursery separately and insert the tube in nursery with the best airflow. So, when we have choose our nursery, gently insert into one nursery and advance tube posteriorly, aiming the tube parallel to nasal septum and superior surface of heart failure. So, uh, in order for the tube to advance to an esophering, uh, allowing the tube to sit into the pressure of esophagus and stomach until the, the major marking is uh, reached. So, slowly inserted it. So, uh, if the children age is appropriate, we can ask them to help us by slowing. So by them slowing, it actually allow the tip to advance further inside the patient. For infant or child with instant gag reflex, swallowing a small sip of water may enhance passage of tip into the esophagus. So uh, while we insert, uh, insert, we observe the infant. Uh, is there any excessive gagging, coughing, wheezing, apnea, or color change during placement uh, that may suggest that the tube is not in the esophagus, but maybe inside the trachea. If we suspect, suspected that, we need to withdraw the tube and re-advance when the child is stable and comfortable. Don't re-advance immediately. So if resistance is met, we draw the tube 1 to 2 cm and rotate it slowly with downward advancement directed toward the closest ear. Never force the nasogastric tube. Because uh, sometimes if the resistance is met, it's actually due to the coil. So if we rotate it slowly, it's uh, avoid the coiling of the tube. So that's what, uh, when we have uh, insert the tube until the marking, then we need to assess whether it's successful or not. So how we assess it? We note the external length of the tube at the nostril, and then we gently aspirate a small quantity of gastric fluid from the NG tube with uh, uh, the string, the 3 ml string, and check the pH. Uh, for usually, supposedly, the pH is about 1 to 4. Uh, because this is a safe uh, pH for uh, gastric content. However, they may have uh, some uh, variation if the patient is on uh, PPI or on any medication that will alter the gastric pH. After that, we need to ensure the external length of tube remains unchanged from step one. Then, then we anchor. Anchor the remainder of the tube with tape. Uh, we can use uh, either this tape or some even use the uh, the what the the tagadam. so anything that available lah and secure to the patient. So we may consider X-ray prior to commencement of fit on all new incision at risk patient. So maybe uh, if the pH testing give false negative for initial information, such as uh, like I said, uh, patient on gas uh, gastric pump inhibitor on gastric continuous fit or with diminish or absent gag reflex, or in a uh, patient with altered level consciousness where we can't really, uh, we can't really, uh, what, we, uh, we can't really take decision clinically. So we need to consider doing a chest, uh, chest x-ray. So if we do a chest x-ray with patient with nasogastric tube in it, it, it's supposed, it should be like this, where the, Tube is straight. There's no coiling, and then the tube uh, does not 
does not go to the trachea or bronchus, it's straight to the gastric. And the tip is inside uh, the gastric cavity below the diaphragm. Okay, so after we have uh, assessed it and we sure that it's successfully inserted, this is the post -produce. the algorithm of what I'm talking about. Just uh, obtain the uh, aspirate and then if the aspirate is true and then we uh, put the tape. So that's it. Then we can start the feeding. However, since uh, every procedure we may come with complications. Uh, so for nasogastric tube, the complication that can occur is pulmonary intubation where we insert the tube uh, to the trachea instead of the two esophagus. And it also can cause pneumothorax, tube displacement, aspiration, nausea, retching, vomiting, nasopharyngeal discomfort due to foreign body insertion, rhinitis, sinusitis, nasal erosion and alteration, especially if the patient have latex allergy. And then otitis media, nothing of the tube, esophageal perforation, nasal esophageal reflux, and as well, might as well produce fissile formation. However, the complication is not a common thing to happen. Then, uh, we should not perform any nasogastric tube insertion without consultation with the medical consultant responsible if the patient is uh, in the post-operative period or in known to have such abnormality such as for atresia or patient with trauma to the head, yes, a skull fracture. Uh, suspected spinal injury, known or suspected exophagia varices because it may cause bleeding after that. Uh, after that. Patient with uh, stricture, obstruction, or sus suspected nasal, medullary, oropharyngeal, or esophageal trauma, based of skull fracture, bleeding disorder. Because uh, if they have bleeding disorder or varices, it, we, we might induce bleeding and cause a patient to uh, go into shock. If they have skull fracture, we might, we might put the tube into the brain uh, so that what thing that we need to be paid portion of luck so that's all for me any question all right guys you got any question so, so the main thing about about insertion of ng tube is uh, and I was, um, you know, you need to measure first. So make sure you got the right measurement. So there's there's a few kind of measurement you can use the, uh, in the from from the nest from the nasal to behind the ears down to the deeper sternums, and th there's also a, a other kind of measurement as well. There's a straight measurement uh, as well. So th there's a few measurement, but uh, uh, which one do you use? It doesn't make any, any difference uh, because. Uh, the length is not it's not change, it's not different uh, in a, uh, it's not no significant difference uh, uh, with with the length anyway. Um, when you look at the X-rays, uh, so before that, uh, if you can get uh, aspirates from the gastric for for the gastric content, um, uh, that's good because you can test for for the pH. But sometimes if the patient on uh, uh, PPI already, or if this the patient been on on the uh, gastro jejunal uh, you know feeding so sometimes you, you don't really get the acidic acid acidic uh, ph so in that case you probably need to get the the x-ray to confirm the tip of the of the ng tube uh, or rice tube um, and making sure uh, when you look at the x-rays the rice tubes is straight down and ensure it it pass the the diaphragm uh, because because if if if, look, if it looks straight and does not pass the diaphragm, it's probably not low enough. Then in that case, you need to push it further down to make sure it is it's uh, going into the into the into the uh, into the uh, uh, sorry into the um, uh, uh, gastric fundus. Okay, um, so 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 that's the main thing about that, and obviously. If it is coiled somewhere, you know, uh, in the, above the trachea or, or above the pharynx, then it could be a sign of a possible um, uh, coanal atresia. If it curl up around the around the uh, trachea, it could be the trun uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. If it going to the right bronchus, then uh, means that it's not in the right place. Uh, so the, the the issue about the neurovascular. Uh, uh, disorders uh, or somebody with the GCS is that, is that you you worry about their swallowing 
because uh, if they don't swallow, means that they are, uh, both of their esophagus and also their their uh, roots uh, to the to the lung are open. So there is a high risk of uh, putting down the the NG tube into the into the uh, into the right bronchus. So so that's the reason. So that's why if you got if you got a child that is crying, a baby that is crying, when you put down the the, the tube. Um, uh, at some point, they will swallow their 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 saliva. So swallowing of the saliva, uh, you basically uh, closing down your 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 airways. So by doing that, you're hoping that the 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 NG tube will go down to the to the abdomen to the gas to the gas uh, trick. Um, so that that's that's the main thing about that. Um, uh, so the good thing now is we got we got this uh, opaque line that you can detect on the X-rays. Um, so if you got the silicon uh, NG tubes, so uh, it lasts, uh, it can be used up to two weeks. So uh, once it's up to two weeks, then you need to change the, the tube because it can also uh, colonize the, the, the fungal infection and also the bacterial infection as well. So that's why you need to remove the silicon tube uh, in, uh, every two weekly. If you got the silk uh, NG, uh, NG tube, then it, it can it can last uh, longer than longer than one month. So, but obviously, um, it's a bit difficult to get the silk tube. Uh, normally, in KKM or, or in, in our hospital, we ask parents to to buy themselves, and then we will uh, put in uh, uh, on their behalf. Uh, but normally, we just advise them to come to the ward or come to the clinics every two weeks for for NG tube uh, changing, and this is only for silicone NG tube. Okay. It's going to be a short one. Um, I think if you've got any question, uh, I'm happy to, to answer your question. But you know, uh, this is a procedure. A procedure you need to you need to see them, you need to observe them, you need to assist them. Uh, what we're doing now is just a theory. Uh, it's good that uh, we have videos uh, uh, for for the insertion of for the venous puncture for the blood clot and also for the uh, NG uh, tube insertion. But but it's just it's just a just a there's still a theory part here. Uh, you, you still need to know the morph and the the environment when you're doing these things is is intense sometimes uh, because sometimes parents uh, don't really don't really have the heart to to let you do it uh, on their child. But um, but but at least you know um, uh, you know if it needs to be done, it to be done. So the parents need to be need to be on board with us when when, we, when we're doing this kind of uh, procedure. So, so you know, uh, what we're doing just just a theory. So the best thing to do is basically, once you are in the hospital, you you are going to see uh, when a puncture is going to be done or any tube going to be done. Just be present so that you know, the, the, how, you know what is the environment, what is the preparation uh, need to be taken before this procedure uh, take place. Okay, any question? Uh, doctor, mm -hmm. I have one more question. Yep. Can you use the feeder tip? Uh, bottle in adult such as in patient with collect vessel or uh, difficult vein that we can't withdraw so much blood. Well, I, I, I suppose you need you, you, you can you can use the you can use a pediatric bottle, but you always tell uh, the the lab that uh, the, the reason why why you send in this bottle in in, in adult you just explain that so that they will be very careful in terms of when they're going to when they're going to you know uh, you know put the sample into the algae, into the plates, and then you as, as, as a clinician, you need to interpret uh, this result in a, uh, with, with caution. Uh, because, because sometimes it, um, uh, they, they're probably not going to yield uh, in a, a proper aerobic uh, in the, uh, sampling very well. Uh, so so th th there's a pro and cons, uh, but obviously if, if you, um, the, if, uh, if you don't really, if you don't really have good samples, then then I would say you can send, but you just need to tell uh, the lab that you're doing this uh, for a reason uh, because because the because the 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 the, the patient is very unwell, so very unwell, you're not be able to withdraw, uh, you know, uh, much uh, blood sample from them, so that's why you send this this amount of bottle. But I I think the lab normally, if you don't get good result, uh, good samples, I think uh, I think. If you, I don't know, I can't remember whether you can send uh, anaerobic or aerobic uh, because probably anaerobic is probably more important for you to send rather than aerobic. I, I, I can't remember which one is which because I've not done adult for, I don't know, 10 years, 12 years. I don't, I don't really know, uh, you know whether, whether 
uh, whether I'm the right person to ask this question. Um, uh, but yes, um, I think you can, but you need to tell the lab why. Uh, they normally tell you that why, why you send peach bottle, why, why you don't just you send the anaerobic bottle. So one of them, I think one of them is, is much more better than, I think it's, is it, I think it's anaerobic. So if, if, if you don't really have a good uh, sample, then I think you can send uh, anaerobic uh, bottles rather than aerobic bottles. I think uh, you need to get back to Dr. Hidayah, I think uh, the, the microbiologist should probably tell you uh, the right answer because no, and it never happened to me, so I, I don't know whether it's the right answer or not. Okay. Right, the rest of you, and the question. Has it already seen your eye? So, why can't you give me a presentation? So, the question is related. Yeah, makan, 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 makan. Okay, if there's no, if the, so no, no, no question, I presume. So, has it, you got no question? The lines, no question. Rahel, no. Uh, Shairah, no further question. Abe, no question. Okay, semua geleng kepala. Uh, Shazwani, no. Idlan, no. Eh? It's, it's, it's a Sunday, so so thank you very much for attending uh, the, the 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 session. So I think we've got a few more few more session. Uh, uh, I would say um, yeah, all the best. I'll see you around. Uh, even though I'm not going to see you physically after this, but yes, uh, you know, all the best. Right, thank you. So we're going to Tangguh Majlis dengan Tazbik for us someone else. Right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.